Before we get started in the video, I want to remind everybody to zip on over to my Patreon page. That link is right there. It just popped up. And when you get there, scroll down and go to the 10,000 subscriber video right here and please watch it. It's my thank you to everybody that's watched me, supported me, and who will support me in the future. It is something you definitely want to watch and do not miss because there's some great information in there. In the last nine months, I've covered Cutefish OS and I've also covered the Cutefish desktop environment on top of Manjaro. All of them looked really promising. All of them were beautiful desktop environments on top of decent distributions, whether it be Manjaro or Ubuntu. But if you all remember, last week, I covered a distribution called Ultramarine, which is based on Fedora 36 and comes with a lot of extra repositories already installed and your media codecs already installed. So it makes it a pretty easy distribution to use. Well, I also saw something on their website that stated they have a version with the Cutefish desktop environment. It did say in early development, only recommended for advanced users, but I was curious. So I downloaded it, used it, and let me tell you all something, it is really nice. And that's what we're gonna to cover today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is brought to you by the eBuzz Central store. Do you like using Linux? Do you like showing your pride in the fact that you use Linux? Well, zip on over to the eBuzz Central store. We have a lot of merchandise, everything from Arch all the way to Ubuntu and pretty much everything in between. We have t-shirts, hoodies, tank tops, you name it, we got it. So zip on over, take a look around. If you find something you like, go ahead and pick it up. If you see something that you want on the store that's not there, please drop a comment below and we'll do our best to get it up there for you. So now we're gonna get to the video. So if you download Ultramarine Cutefish, put it on a USB or open it up into a virtual machine, this is the desktop that you're met with. It's got the same beautiful wallpaper, but you'll notice the environment that you're working in is just a little different. You've got a panel up top and then you've got your dock down here and what I do like about the dock is they have made it to where the icons don't pop up they didn't make it too mac os -y, if that's a word so we're going to start off by right clicking on the desktop you can create a new folder new documents change your background let's go ahead and take a look at some of the backgrounds real quick and you do have your base fedora backgrounds and I'm going to go ahead and just change it let's put it on something like that I do like that so we will leave it there and we'll go ahead and right click again you've got properties open in terminal up top you've got your clock right here and your notification center your notifications will be kept right in here and out of the way and then you do have battery and volume and then you can turn dark mode on or off right here in your panel which i like you don't have to go into settings to do it you can just come right over here click on it and you're in dark mode so i'm going to leave that right there now, what I do want to say is a lot of people like the deepened desktop environment, the one that comes with the Chinese distribution. I do like deepened. I think it's beautiful. I think the way it's designed is great. But really, at the end of the day, I'm leaning towards Cutefish because it's a little bit lighter, but you still get that professional and polished feel. Now, Cutefish is built with the QT framework and off of KDE. So you're going to get a lot of that polish that you're looking at coming from those two projects. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and go to settings. I'll scroll all the way to the bottom and go to about, and it lets you know this is Cutefish, system version 0.7, system type 64-bit. Now, in Ultramarine, you are running the 5.17.7-300 kernel. We're running four gigabytes of RAM and we have five gigabytes of internal storage. Now, if you go up top in your settings, you've got LAN, Ethernet, Bluetooth, proxy, display. You've got your appearance right here where you can change it to light or dark, which we just did right up here with the click of a button. Now, you can dim the wallpaper for a dark theme. So if you click that on, you can see the wallpaper in the background dims. I'm going to go ahead and put that back up. And then, of course, you can turn system effects on or off. Depending on what kind of specs your PC or your laptop has, this is a button right here you'll want to know how you have access to because if you have an older system and it seems to be lagging a little bit or you know what I'm talking about, you can come over here, flip that off, and you can speed things up a little bit. And then you can change your animations here. It's set on default. You can minimize animation or magic lamp it. Then you do have your accent colors right here. You've got blue, red, green, purple, pink, yellow, and then it looks like a gray. And then you've got your fonts. Noto Sans, you can change these any way you want to. 
You can also turn on anti-aliasing if you want to. You can have a fixed font. You can change your font sizes right here. As you can see, they change over here and in your windows as well. And then hinting, it's set on slight. I'm just going to leave that there. We've already looked at background. Now with the dock, you do have some different things you can do with the dock here. Let's go ahead and maximize that. Now right here, we're on center. You could click it and make it a full. And it'll move everything over to the left and give you a full panel all the way across the bottom. And then also you can move it. You can switch it over to the left or you can switch it over to the right. Now on bigger monitors, I like using it on the left or right, generally on the right for the simple fact that monitors are wider than they all taller. So you get a little bit more room that way. Now you can also change the size of the dock. You can make it small, medium, large, or huge, depending on your preference. I like leaving it on medium. And then you can always show, which means when you have a window, it'll always be up or you can always hide it. You can click on always hide, it'll disappear. And then you have to hover over or you have to minimize the window before it'll pop back up. Okay. So let's open that back up. And then of course you've got smart hide where it'll hide on its own if you want to. I'm just going to leave always show for this video. But if you do download it, take it for a test drive, that's something you can definitely take a look at. Then you can change your user settings right here or add a user, notification, sounds, mouse, date and time, your general Linux settings over here. So it gives you a lot of different options there. And it's definitely a beautiful desktop environment. I like with it out of the box, you get the rounded corners. Now that's a lot of the complaints you'll get when people use something like a Deepin. They'll get it set up or they'll try it in a virtual machine or try it on a USB. And when they go to use it, it doesn't have the rounded corners. They can change the effects. They can do all different things to it. It just won't work. This one out of the box on a USB or in virtual machine comes with the rounded corners and it just, it is a beautiful looking desktop environment. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And then if you go up top, you've got your desktop button. It doesn't really do anything until you have windows open. Go over here to the launcher and you can see in the launcher, you have a minimalistic amount of software. You've got calculator, you've got file manager. Let's go ahead and take a look at file manager. And as you can see, let's go ahead and maximize the file manager. You do have a global menu up here. So it comes out of the box with that. And if you go down here and let's get some information on file manager, it just says it's a file manager designed for Cutefish OS. And then you can go to the cutefishos.com site to get more information about it. So let's go ahead and close that. You got your usual suspects over here. You got your home folders right here. It really works. Playing around with it, doing some different video work and doing some different photo work it was easy to get around it made things easy to do and it just stayed out of my way so i could get my work done i'm going to go ahead and close out of that now let's pop down here to the terminal and what i want to see in the terminal is if they have htop installed and they do out of the box so at present i got four gigabytes of ram issued to this machine we're using about 900 megabytes at rest with the terminal open not really light, but at the same time, not really heavy. So it's definitely something you want to take a look at. I just like the overall feel and look of this desktop environment. If you're somebody that's coming from a Windows or you're somebody that definitely is coming from a Mac, I think you'd feel right at home here. It's just a really simple desktop environment to navigate. And when I say it's definitely a simple desktop environment to navigate, sometimes when people switch over to KDE, it can be a little bit overwhelming. There's so many settings and so many customizations that it can frustrate you sometimes. Trust me, as a KDE user, I've been frustrated before and you just got to work through it. But if you're somebody that's wanting something beautiful out of the box that just works, Cute Fish Ultramarine is doing it. It is definitely a nice distribution. So let's zip back on over to the launcher. You've got Firefox, Firewall, Kate, Console, LibreOffice. Now that's what I wanted to check out. Let's open up LibreOffice Writer. And I want to see what kind of look you get in the cute fish desktop environment. So it opens up. As you can see, you've got your global menu up here, which is usually listed right here. Or you can hide it in a tabbed mode. And I like the look. you got a dark mode. It switched over to dark mode. Now, what I do want to see is if I go back to a light mode. Yeah, it didn't change it to a light mode. So let's restart it and see if that switches. Close. LibreOffice Writer. There it is. And it opens in a light mode. So it does respect the theme of the desktop environment, but you do have to restart it to get it to do that. 
because if I go over here, click dark mode, it doesn't change. Okay, so we will close, open back up, and it'll switch to the dark mode. So I do like that it respects it. I wish it would change automatically when you went ahead and switched your theme, but that's not something I'm really going to complain about. They've come a long way with it. It's looking really good. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And let's open the launcher back up. You've got your QT5 settings, settings we've already looked at. Now let's take a look at how we get applications and software. And our software center has opened up. Now this is strange because I know we're in dark mode and the software center isn't in dark mode. So maybe they can get this fixed in the future. Not a deal breaker for me. Honestly, I've been running this on an older HP laptop for about three days now and haven't had any issues and the software center doesn't really bother me that it's not in the dark mode. It's something that I'm sure they'll fix in the future, but you've got your Explorer right here. You can go down here and you can find different applications that you're interested in downloading. These are the suggested ones. And then of course you can come up top, click on installed. It'll let you know what's installed out of the box. And then of course, updates that are due. We're not gonna be doing any updates here because we are in a virtual machine. And I will go back to installed. And as you can see, you got your list of installed right here, Belibit, GUI. This right here is like a disk program that's used by Anaconda, but you can also just use it in the system. Let me go show it to you real quick. It's right here. Let's go ahead and click on it. And when it opens up, this just shows you all your devices that you have over here and you have options to repartition, format, everything you need to do right there. So it's generally a terminal based application, but this is the GUI that goes along with it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And you can scroll down. That's your installed. Go over to Explore. Let's do a search real quick and look for something like OBS Studio. And it pops up right here. So if you click on that, you can tell up here, RPM Fusion. It's already installed. You don't have to worry about it. So if you're somebody that likes using Fedora-based operating systems, but you don't like the hassle of adding repositories or media codecs, Ultramarine is definitely one to take a look at. And if you want to know more information about it, you can look at my previous video that I did on Ultramarine, and it covers all the different things that are in the operating system. And then you come down here, it's available in Flatpak or RPM Fusion, however you want to use it. I know some people that love Flatpak. I know some people that just disdain have disdain for it. So let's go ahead and back up over here and close out a software. Let's go back to the launcher. And I do believe that's pretty much it. If you want a light, clean looking desktop environment without a lot of fuss, something that you don't want to have to put a lot of work into, but looks polished out of the box, definitely give the Cutefish desktop environment a shot. Now, if I was going to give it a shot, I would do it with the Ultramarine distribution. I will link that in the description below so you can go over and download it and take a look at it. Just let me know. Is it something you might do that with? Is it something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're watching this video today and you are in the United States, I want to wish you a happy Memorial Day. I hope you and your family have a great day and be safe out there. And if you get a chance, please zip on over to the Ebo Central store. Take a look around. If you see something you like, pick it up. If you have a suggestion for something to put on the store that's not already there, drop that in the comments below and we'll do our best to get it up there for you. Do me a big favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, throwing us a donation on PayPal, or zipping on over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.